Hey guys, it's Anna and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most unique fragrances in my collection. And I do definitely have a good amount of unique fragrances aside from these, but I would say that this is like the first bunch of fragrances that comes to mind. And as you may know, I have such a wild appreciation for unique scents. I love my good tried and true easy reaches as well, but there's something so exciting and special when you discover a fragrance that is truly so different to anything you've experienced before. I just find the creativity and art of it all so fascinating and I love going on a journey with a fragrance. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I will happily do another one down the road. But for today, I'm gonna start with one you have to get your hands on simply for the spring and summer. It's the golden season for this baby right here. And that is Dead Cool Red Dakota. I recommend this equally for both men and women. Talk about a killer, impactful, I'm gonna wear out the word unique. I need to, I'll try not to overdo it, but don't be turning this video into a drinking game. I am typically not a fan of citrus fragrances. They just don't, do it for me, they don't captivate me. I think they smell nice, fresh, clean, I love that, but I need to be wowed. And truth be told, I'm simply not the majority of the time. I want that indisputable, addictive factor where I get the reaction of there is no doubt in my mind that I want this. So if you guys have any amazing citrus fragrance recommendations that you think I would love, please let me know. This is definitely in my top two. Talk about a cool scent. Now, like I said, this is perfectly unisex, but for the imagery that I'm giving you today, this is my example. It's somehow perfectly mixing the cool girl aesthetic with the clean girl aesthetic. This girl, very athletic. She's just a natural in that department. She can do just about anything you throw at her. Soccer, volleyball, swimming, she can pretty much just do it all. Not only can she keep up with the boys, but she's better than a lot of them, okay? That's his girl. She's just cool. She's a chill person to be around. This is so interesting because on the one hand, I get this super bright, juicy clementine. Super realistic, like I can bite into it. And then I also get this other aspect of the clementine where you get this more bitter, dried, rind of the fruit. It definitely has a little bit of a bite and tang to it. So it's not your everyday citrus. There's a touch of gardenia, a very modern, clean, creamy gardenia. Normally not a fan of the note, but it blends so effortlessly. In here, it's supported with a base of wood, a warm amber, and then there's this sugared, absolutely addictive wild berry note. And that note accompanied with the dynamic clementine just keeps drawing me back, pulling me in. I find this to be a very versatile scent when it comes to the seasons because on the one hand, because it's a citrus, it's refreshing, it's great for the warm weather, but because it also has an edge and a depth to it, it can work in the fall as well. I get about five hours out of this one with moderate projection. I definitely get my compliments out of this one. Next fragrance is Wilhelm Perfumery's Poets of Berlin. And this fragrance was the one that opened my eyes to the note of blueberry. I had never, I don't think, smelled that before in a fragrance before this one, or at least this is definitely the first one I fell in love with. Such an incredible dynamic scent. This has a lot of different factors to it. There are some gourmand notes in here and some people definitely get more of a gourmand quality. To my nose, this does not smell edible, but it's absolutely yummy. Like. I adore the blueberry, the vanilla, the lemon adds a brightness to the scent and a fresh quality as well. The vanilla is not super sweet or sugary. That bamboo note really cuts through this fragrance and makes it an edgy, unique, earthy scent. So for that reason, this scent won't be for everyone 
it's crazy because I was talking to one of my friends the other day and I was mentioning how I love the note of blueberry and she's like, blueberry, I've never heard of that being in a perfume before. And I'm like, oh, I'll bring you a couple samples. I was not expecting her to like this. Like I was fully prepping her for like, this is different. And this one was her favorite. She loved it. And she literally texted me the other day like, where can I buy this? Same thing with my sister, actually. I've mentioned this in a past video, but one trip that I went to go visit my family, I brought this fragrance with me, and this was absolutely a favorite. My sister wanted a bottle, then my mom is now smelling that bottle, and she's like, I love this perfume, I want one. I'm pleasantly surprised, but they love it. I mean, so do I. This is my absolute favorite from the brand. I already have a bigger, backup bottle ready to open. But truth be told, I wasn't expecting it to be as big of a hit as it was for them. So in my circle, this is one of the most loved scents. And they have a hard time describing it as well. They don't really know what they're getting, but they all say that they pick up on this spicy factor, which there isn't anything spicy in here, but I think they're interpreting the bamboo in that way because it is so different and it does definitely have this earthy, a little bitter bite to it. It's such a special scent to me and I adore wearing this in the warm weather, like the way this just blossoms on my skin in the heat. Those yummy, sweet, fruity notes just really pop and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I also get about five hours out of this one with moderate projection. Next up, we're gonna talk about Amouage Guidance. And Amouage as a house, traditionally, just across the board, is a very unique fragrance brand. If you're into blind buying, this is not the brand to do so with. I've tried a lot from their brand, and this is one of my favorites. This is such an interesting, incredibly different, take on a woody, fruity, floral scent. I haven't smelled anything done like this before. It's not a linear experience. It is going to change um, on your skin as you wear it. I personally really love the opening. It pulls me in so many different directions. It's like fireworks <laughs> going off in my nose. I am hit with so many different facets of the fragrance. Primarily to me, this is like the most ridiculously creamy sandalwood. It truly smells like it's blended into a cream. There's a bit of vanilla, like a thick pear puree. Osmanthus, which is obviously floral, but also lends an apricot tone. I'm also hit with a bit of hazelnuts in the opening. Light creamy shavings. It's nothing too nutty. The hazelnut note in particular, I only get for a couple minutes. And it's also most predominantly fruity to me in that opening stage. Definitely something to experience. And the longer this sits on your skin, the more the notes all just meld together. Still keeping the components of the floral and the fruity, but they definitely tone down and just, just smells like they've been thrown in the blender with the wood and vanilla then. I think it's a beautiful fragrance for the fall and spring months. Performance is absolutely outstanding. And it's just an incredibly luxurious, refined, sophisticated, grown up version of a fruity fragrance because you absolutely have those prominent woody notes with also the blend of florals incredibly well blended. I will say this is a composition that can be difficult to pick out individual notes, except for that beginning experience. It's so smooth. A excellent new release for me from Amouage. And then this was my very first love from Amouage. I had to, of course, <laughs> include another one because like I said, the house um, just overall has very unique scents. And one of my first niche fragrances. So I have so many scent memories attached to this fragrance. It really takes me back to that time in my life where I was just absolutely entranced by the world of fragrance and every single scent just felt like a wildly new cool discovery. I mean, I'm still, I'm, as you can tell, incredibly entranced to this day. What can I say? Amouage loves their Osmanthus and they do it right. I will say the Osmanthus in here definitely is popping a lot more than in Guidance. In here, it smells flat out, like dark, 
super duper ripe, like, like just oozing with juice apricots where I'm getting the apricot vibe in guidance, but it will lean a little bit more to the floral side in comparison. This is giving me fruit. So good. And then so cool. That white tobacco, it's not going to be for everyone, but I love me a tobacco note. And it's this clean version of that note. I don't know. It doesn't weigh down the fragrance. It doesn't make it too dark but it's absolutely adding that edge intrigue and character. Eric will actually pick this up and wear it from time to time as well. I do think it is feminine leaning, but it still works on a man. And the vanilla is addictive in here. The way that pairs up with the osmanthus is just beguiling. This vanilla definitely has a sugared, almost thick drizzle kind of effect to it, as if this was covering the apricots. And then there is a bit of a very creamy almond note, but I don't smell this personally and think nutty. I feel special when I wear it. I know nobody is smelling like me. It just instantly puts me in a good mood. And this is a very long lasting scent with moderate projection. Next up is Zara Ebony Wood. And I think that this fragrance is widely known as one of Zara's best creations simply for the fact of its incredible originality. A lot of Zara's fragrances are duping other scents, which can be a great option for people who are looking for scents at a more affordable price point, but I really love it when they do their own thing and this is their own thing. This is not gonna be for everyone. This is mysterious, okay? I smell this and I feel like I can picture like the mysterious fog rolling in, okay? I can feel the suspense. I feel like I'm in a fantasy book of some sort. Like this is the scent of a vampire in a dark, damp, enchanted forest. You're obviously getting that dark ebony wood. It's a very rich scent. Also, I wanna know incredible performance. It can be very hit or miss with Zara, I only need to spray this five times. This is lasting me all day. It has a presence, it's strong. Don't overdo it because if you overdo it with the sprays here, you're probably gonna overwhelm yourself and then you're not gonna like it anymore. <laughs> it's warm and spicy from the clove pink pepper and it's not listed, but I detect a bit of a very dark cherry undertone and also a bit of a licorice vibe as well. So for that reason, this layers excellently with cherry fragrances. Um, honestly, that's my go-to way to wear it now, just to make it feel a little bit more wearable for me because this is quite the individual scent, but I adore layering with it because it just adds an insane amount of character and confidence, a boldness to my scent of the day. Next up is now our third bottle empty, Lease Bow. And although it's empty, yes, I can still very well smell it. And yes, of course, we're gonna get another one. One of my favorite woody vanillas on the planet, and they just executed it so well. I truly cannot compare it to any other woody vanilla. The ingredients used in this fragrance just smell incredibly natural. If you are a lover of perfumes that have a natural, clean element to them, I highly recommend checking out Bo. The performance of this is fantastic as well. Literally, Eric will spray this upstairs. I will be all the way downstairs. I will yell out, Bo, lasts all day. Everyone is gonna smell you. But what's fantastic about this scent is that it never becomes overwhelming. This is not an intense, like deep, dark scent. It's so likable. So many compliments with this one. There are woody notes of cedar, sequoia, guyac wood, cedar being the note I get most prominently, and then vanilla as a second dominant note. And it just feels like a fluffy, powdery, but also a bit creamy blanket lying over this wood. There's a sweet incense, an Elemi resin note, a touch of a dry tobacco. It's such a comforting, calming scent. It brings me so much happiness, not just because of the scent itself, 
but also the scent association for me now. Both Eric and I wear this, but this has literally become Eric's signature scent. He goes through these phases where he will just be like abusing a particular scent or two. Every several months he kind of switches gears, but ever since we've gotten this, it's been the phase of bow and a wonderful phase. It has been. Next fragrance is Imaginary Authors, A Whiff of a Waffle Cone. And this is absolutely your ice cream perfume. However, it is not just like a vanilla ice cream scent. It's still one you're definitely gonna need to sample first because people will be experiencing different things out of this scent, which is why, of course, in this unique video. This is a specialty ice cream, but then there's also a real warmth because of the gourmand sweet character of the scent. And it's not listed, but I definitely get a woody vibe as well. Like as if this ice cream shop is in an old, kind of like an old fashioned cute wooden building. Like it's giving a mom and pop ice cream shop vibe. This is a vanilla bean ice cream with caramel drizzle striped throughout, just a touch of cinnamon, and an ever so slight kind of lemony citrus touch. Also a bit of this balmy, warm, resinous feel to the scent, which I kind of picture coming from the building from the note of amorous. Really fun scent and definitely a different take on the concept of an ice cream perfume. I have two sisters, the youngest one like absolutely adoring Poets of Berlin, and my other sister, this is her go-to scent. It's so funny because I bought her the perfume and the candle version for her birthday and she literally bought the perfume for herself on her birthday. So she is, she is stocked. She loves her warm, cozy vanilla scents. So this has been a big hit for her. And also if you like strobe waffles, I would highly recommend sampling this, give it a try because it absolutely feels like there are some throat waffles in the mix here. Let's do another gourmand, Narcotica's Dulce Diablo. One of the best chocolate perfumes, in my opinion. This is a gourmand perfume, so you gotta be into that. But what I love about this is that this is a grown gourmand. It smells like luxury. It smells refined. Like I'm getting this whole experience of those like really fancy chocolate stores. Like everything is outrageously expensive and they have these elaborate decadent presentations and packaging and, and like a single chocolate strawberry is like $10. <laughs> it's giving that kind of luxury experience for me. Like I feel like Money is no object. <sighs> Give me a dozen for my Sunday brunch with the girls. Not that this smells like chocolate covered strawberries at all. I'm just saying it's giving me those vibes of like that, those luxurious high end chocolate stores. It's just such an unbelievably scrumptious, yummy, smooth, boozy chocolate apricot scent. The, the, the blend, <laughs> My words, where are they? Choice of notes, exquisite. There were a couple in here prior to testing this where I was a little bit nervous about the honey being one, um, since it will often dominate a scent. This is not a honey bomb, but it absolutely has this like dreamy. Golden feel to it, okay? And it's sugared to perfection. I would only be wearing this in the fall and winter, okay? It's gonna be it's gonna be too much in the warmer months. But you wear this in the cold or a night out and people are gonna be hungry. It's gonna be making people hungry. I also really appreciate the addition of sandalwood. That note isn't very prominent to me. However, it does ground the fragrance and it keeps the gourmand notes from being too overkill even though it is a rich decadent scent. I would say that this is unisex leaning slightly feminine but could still definitely work on a guy. If this is your taste, honestly, frankly, I feel like ladies are gonna lose their mind if a guy wears this because it does have that darkness to it where it can work. But then that alluring yummy factor, you got the booze, you're good, you're good. Also, that is an extract the parfum concentration. 
fantastic performance. This next scent is a beautiful choice for the ladies for this spring and summer, and that is Fragrance Du Bois Oud Jeune Intense. If you love your tropical florals, fruity perfumes. Honestly, even if you aren't really into fruity perfumes, I would still check this out because it is so well blended. Like, yes, I can definitely tell that there are refined, smooth, yummy, fruity notes in here, but it's not straight up like a fruit bowl. And I cannot distinguish the fruity notes. It just adds a very uplifting, happy character to this scent. There's a sexy, sensual musk. I picture like a bronze Brazilian goddess wearing this like she's wearing this super sexy golden bikini that complements her tan so nicely she looks like a walking commercial and like this is what she's wearing this is what she has on her body and i really love how easily and beautifully this melds with your skin like there's definitely this exotic body oil a factor to this scent. It's not so much perfumey. And although there is ylang ylang and tiari flower, to me, there's nothing in here that smells anything like suntan lotion, but it's absolutely transporting you to somewhere exotic in the spring, summer, tropical with a body oil vibe. There is definitely a density to this scent, a lot of warmth. So for myself personally, I don't like to wear it on super hot days. I'd say the 70s and 80s is is the perfect range for this scent for me. And this has great lasting power. This will last on me all day with moderate projection. And the last fragrance for today, Maison Crivelli Iris Malikan. Fantastic, unisex, earthy, truly so original. I honestly can't even comprehend like how they conceptualized <laughs> this scent. I have no clue how they even came up with this. It's really something else. This is confidence in a bottle for me. Whenever I'm feeling like I need an extra boost, I wanna feel like a boss, this is a scent that will take me there. I feel like Iris Malikan is power in a bottle. The blast of orris roots, so it's very, powdery, dense, thick, creamy. There's also that smooth vanilla, not, nothing too sugary, and that note definitely comes out more in the dry down. I get more of like a woody, earthy experience in the opening. The longer it sits on my skin, it becomes smoother. I get more vanilla. I get a slight white chocolate facet. There's a sexy leather in here. It's nothing too dark in my opinion. It's not animalic. It's definitely noticeable, but it's so well blended and the notes don't feel like they're competing. It's earthy, woody, leathery, green, powdery, creamy vanilla. So different. Um, absolutely 100% something you need to sample first. This is one of the strongest fragrances in my collection. I cannot believe this is not labeled an extrait de parfum concentration. Three to five sprays, I'm not kidding, it's lasting me like 24 hours. It could probably last longer if I wasn't showering every day, <laughs> but it sticks to clothes like eternally. It smells like a traveler's fragrance to me. Like there is such a real story here. Like this person has experienced so much, they know so much about so much. They're down to earth and grounded, but incredibly confident in themselves. So that wraps up my list for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I would appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.